Okay, Mark's not around. He went out of town with a buddy. He'll be back later today. And I decided to do some laundry. And look what's happening. So we've got an error, A10. I cannot open this. Not sure what that is. So, time to look online and see what's going on. So I'm hearing that down below here, there is um, this panel and there's some, some sort of filter over here that can get clogged, which uh, when it's in the spin cycle, if it's clogged up, it's just going to shut itself down. So let's see what I can do. I've got a catch here for water. There's a tray already for water. Boy, this is a tight fit. Here we go. Push down and then pull out. All right. Just like in the video, they said there'll be some kind of instructions here. So here's the filter, and this is where it's going to start draining. We'll try to catch some water. Oh man, it's glugging. It must be a lot of water. All right, keep going. Now I see why the tray is put there. That makes a lot of sense. Thank you, Numar, and all the other RV makers. But I would have known. I'm so good about cleaning the, the vent out of the dryer. I didn't know this existed. It's not going too good. But the water stopped draining, so now I should be able to pull out this filter, which does not look plugged. like nothing on it. Oh, great. Okay. Well, let's see if there's... Oh, yeah. Okay. Rubber glove. That'll do it. All right. How the heck did that get in there, Mark? In October of last year, Sue and I recorded a segment on our preferred sewer hoses. And because I was going to handle the ones on camera that I was getting rid of, of course I put gloves on. I had used these hoses only two or three times and decided that I was going to give them to my son that just bought a fifth wheel. Now, because I was a little bit out of sorts being on the wrong side of the rig and in fact working out of a cardboard box like a, a carnival barker here talking about hoses. I was a little discombobulated when I was all done and when I took my gloves off uh, the correct way inside out and they really weren't that dirty to begin with, I ended up stuffing them in my pocket thinking the next available wastebasket I passed I would put them in. Unfortunately you can see what happened. They fell out of my pocket during the washing process. Folks, I'm here to tell you, be careful with your gloves and always check your pockets for coins and keys and God knows what else is in your pockets before it goes into the laundry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, problem solved. Now I just got to figure out how to siphon all this water out of here. This hose is actually from a, a bottle of Def. All right, just press the button. And it says it's going to go into spin. I'm assuming that's where it where it stopped, and it remembered that. All right, are you going to work? Start. Oh yay! Got to hold it, then it starts up. Oh my God, Mark will be so proud of me. And there it is. We're back in action. All is well. <laughs> That's what I say. So on one of my last recordings, I talked about this timer 
that sometimes you can hit the buttons if you've got it hanging on you. And I said something about they're so cheap that maybe you should get multiple timers so that if you hit one, chances are you won't hit the other ones. I also talked about a two by four attachment that I would buy if I could get it that it would hit me in the head. Well, right now I'm filling my water tanks and I put this on the brim of my hat here. And while I was filling my water tanks, I was startled here so much, I almost hit my head on the roof here. But putting this on the brim of your hat, I don't know if you can hear it, it's super loud for me. It's vibrating my head. Uh, so just, just a pro tip that if you get this timer, put it on the bill of your hat. It's not heavy enough to tip anything off. It's kind of like you get a free head massage. I'm it thinking about vibrate. not turning it off. <laughs> now what are you doing? Well, one of the things uh, we had one time when we were moving, we had a bird that made a nest underneath uh, one of our slides. Uh, we had a wasp nest one time. Uh, so one of the pro tips is you, if you've been sitting for a while, you should look inside to see if any birds made any nests in here. If you've got any wasps or you know anything else in here, uh, you want to make sure that there isn't any uh, belts that look obviously weird. I replace my belts way frequently than I should. That doesn't mean that I couldn't be unlucky. But pretty much didn't find anything here. I don't really know what I'm looking at, but I'm thinking that if like a baby chihuahua or something was in here, I'd recognize it. I mean, compared to like this or this or this, it, I, it would be out of place. So. It's Memorial Day 2020, and Sue and I are actually getting ready to leave this beautiful community we're in that's just full of RV ported homes and casitas. You can see that right next to me here in the back actually is a RV casita with a port in back of it for someone to stay in. Uh, the guy that graciously hooked us up with this wonderful spot to stay in, he lives right over here. Hi Mark, don't know when we're going to publish this, but really thank you for the opportunity to hook us up here. The reason I'm making this video here is I want to climb on this ladder and I want to show all you people with motorhomes uh, uh, that have side marker lights and cab lights, I want to show you something. The only reason I'm up here today making a video about my side marker lights, and this is an example of what I'm talking about on the front cap of my, fi of my uh, motorhome here. I hope uh, the sound works out okay. I do have air conditioning units up here that are grinding away. It's a very hot day today. But this marker light and the one on the complete opposite side decided not to work. And I guess to my horror, when I came up here to look at them, I started to see how the uh, caulking was degraded. And I guess it's even worse than that because when I finally got one of these lights, I got it from Mark, guy across the street, very helpful. He happened to have these some in stock. And you can see that these things just plug into the hole and there's no bolts holding anything tight and uh, you can see from the uh, witness marks here on the hole that there wasn't a whole lot of caulk that was caulked around to hold that thing. Now when I caulk this in I'll probably caulk the heck out of it in the back and around and maybe even the flat surface and I'll push it down tight and then around the outside, I will caulk it much better at well. Uh, big deal, right? Uh, why make this video? I think why make this video is that the only reason I'm up here is the lights didn't work. I think folks should make a point, put it on their list of things to do, to go up and check every one of these lights. I have five in the front, five in the back. That's 10 fantastic opportunities to have a leak. 
Um, you'll see that Numar did not provide me with an overabundance of wire here. So I, in fact, checked that this light is, uh, that it does light when I hook these wires up. I'll probably leave this connection. I'll probably tape it because I'm a belt and suspenders guy. I, of course, will clean this very well before I put it back together. But I'm going to solder these wires and then uh, put this puppy back together. So probably got six or ten hours worth of work yet to go. All right, so that's uh, one of today's projects, trying to get ready. Do a little drone shot here of showing the Chan Man's roof here. That's what it looks like. Uh, you can see I got some solar panels in there somewhere, unless they blew off. So I'm almost at the climax of the job here, finishing up putting in my cab clearance lights. We're in Florida. It's about 90 degrees with a 4,000% humidity <laughs> that just talking to you, the back of my head is sweating. But I just wanted to show you the importance of Fifi. We've talked about this many times on my channel. You'll notice up here, when I was leaning against the ladder, the edges of this ladder on my tender little thighs was getting so irritating that that's all I could think of and I couldn't do a decent job. So I went and I strapped Fifi on to lean against and it's like being in heaven. So once again, Fifi saves the day. Finish this job up, Sue. So obviously Fifi's good for standing on, but Fifi's also like a good friend. You can lean on him. And you can lean on that ladder so your husband doesn't slide up. <laughs> and now you'll see that I have the ladder off to the side here. I uh, have the TV antenna up there to work on. And working on the roof is kind of dangerous for a guy like me. So I've developed a kind of a secret technique to stay ultra safe when working on the roof. Uh, why don't you come with me? I'll, uh, I'll share that technique with you. I'm working in very cramped quarters here. I'm in a carport. So you can see that I have a wall to my right. So I have the ladder propped up to the side and I have a little Fifi up there uh, for when I'm leaning over working on the ladder and uh, let's take a look up there and uh, check out my other technique. All right let's take a trip up this ladder. I'll show you what I'm working on. I have my secret technique up here for staying safe working on the roof. I in fact let Sue do it. So I used to be his wife, but obviously now I'm his technique. You're my technician. technician. Yeah, I want. Oh, you I, said the technique. Yeah. Technique. Yeah. Uh, imagine a Chan man trying to sit uh, cross legged like that, <laughs> working comfortably on something. So, what we got here, and I'd like to alert all Dutch Star owners, once again, I have to apologize. We literally are right next to an air conditioner. It is 90 some degrees and it's really hot here. But on anybody that has a TV antenna that has the crank up mechanism and then the antenna revolves around about 340 degrees or so and it uh, revolves one way and it spanks against a, uh, a hard stop on the other end and then it cranks the other way and it spanks against another one. And what's been happening is this little boot here has, I, I caught it when I was up here luckily, that when the antenna cranks one way totally, the thing was being pushed all the way over there and exposing a big gaping hole. So we're gonna try to uh, put a radiator clamp on it and schmuck it up and hope for the best. All right, Sue, you're my secret technique. Make it happen. Yep, here's a good shot of the Chan Man's roof. All right, we're raising the antenna, the proverbial 13 uh, cranks. All right, rotate it one way on. We're going to rotate it and see if that boot survives. Okay, it did. She's rotating it the other way. And the 
boot survive. All right, put it back down. And you'll see that it has to fit in a carriage there. And it fits right down in between a fork and lays on the roof. I'd say it's a job well done, honey. I agree. Yes. We greased the gear there to go down. I found some uh, black rubber tubing. Yeah, I know it's probably uh, only partially UV protected, but you got to do what you got to do when you're in the field. Dicor. Yes, Dicor. Folks, that's what you need. If you're not using Dicor, you're using the wrong stuff. Uh, yeah. And it is already self-leveling. So we just coated that boot because we don't have a new boot. And then we belt and suspended it by putting the uh, outside uh, black thing on. So come on, Sue. Let's get down on the ground. With an RV, it's always something. So right now, you'll see I have somebody drilling a hole in my front windshield. And it's actually a glass repair guy that I think is relieving the stress point where the chip is from the rock and then he will ultimately fill it uh, with epoxy. Okay, so this is kind of interesting because the Rain X uh, kits that I profess that people should carry and use on an emergency basis and I have used them in the past and they have worked amazingly well with the exception of drilling a hole with a diamond drill bit <clears throat> excuse me like uh, this guy did the process seems the same the suction cup area on this particular device does look bigger than the one on the rain -X. It looks like this could fill something in the neighborhood of slightly less than a quarter. Um, and he also has kind of an endless supply that he's injecting under pressure. On the rain -X kit that you get, you put liquid in it has a much smaller lip uh, o-ring area, a set of lips like you're kissing the windshield that uh, touches the windshield on the Rain X gadget. You then drop the epoxy into like a uh, column or a shaft that's threaded and then you thread a kind of a plastic nut into these threads and it in effect pressurizes and sends the epoxy uh, down into the lip area and injects it into the crack. See if we can get a close-up shot of this area here. That's what's being fixed. There's the <coughs> hypodermic. I think this repair is going to be about $125. And if he would find something else, then that next repair would be $50. You can see that if you have a uh, $10 or $15 rain -X injection equipment uh, to fix this, uh, it's a pretty economical way to do it. I am not going to fall for the trap and send this to my insurance company to save $125 only to have them up my insurance rates by $200 for the next 10 years. So, all right. We're all done with Auto Glass Warehouse here in Fort Myers. Cost me $133.13 to have this crack fixed. I fixed some cracks in the past and mine actually turned out clear. But I think this was deeper and bigger, and I saw the way they did it, and I actually have more confidence in the way they did it. They actually drilled a little hole here to provide an avenue to be able to 
push the epoxy in and through and um, they said that they've been doing this for a long time and they never have any issues. The pro tip here I want to tell you about is that when you're driving around you're going to constantly always get chips. You're going to constantly hear rocks and things hit the, uh, the windshield and you're going to have to be diligent on what's a new chip and what's an old chip. So what I've done is I've made a little diagram of my windshield here and I'm measuring from the right side and from the bottom where this particular chip is. So I've just said that this chip here is at 16 and a half inches from the edge and it's 20 and a quarter from the bottom and I've got it recorded as fixed so that when Sue and I are driving next time and wham something hits us and we'll think it's over here somewhere if we look at this chip and we see that it's at 16 and a half and 20 and a quarter we know that we're good to go and we're all fixed up all right that's it guys hope that helps that was actually a pro tip that's a pro tip doesn't happen often I know what you <laughs> <laughs> a real one Mark, Mark, what are you doing? Nothing. Marco. Nothing. What's in your hand? Nothing. Nothing. Jeez. <laughs> Were you at the RV mall again? Marco. All right. I've been thinking about getting a Swifter. When I was in our stick and brick house, I of course had one of these just like everybody. We had a super duper one had a sprayer in it but I was thinking about getting a simple one like this so that I could keep the floors cleaner especially with COVID you know so we could spray it down and kind of keep the floor from you know tracking everything in here and lo and behold you won't be able to see it but if you look Sue and I went to take a walk and there's a green hedge there on this side of the street directly across from the black pickup truck there's a garbage can there and this this baby was sitting in there and I snagged it and I'm gonna wipe it down later and it looks like it's in perfect shape once again this is the way you can afford to have a Dutch star when you save money on stuff like this